Okay, we're, done do, we're going to do number 24, calling subroutines inside loops. You might need to watch this video two or three times, or you might not, but I know if, it, if I were in your shoes, I would need to watch this a few times. This is some code that will check if something is a prime number. Now, a prime number, just to remind you, is a number that you can only get to by timesing it by one and itself. So, for instance, 11. You know, you can't say two times any, nor any round number is 11, because it's two times five and a half. Um, 10 is not a prime number, because two times five is 10. 12, two times six, so it's not a prime number, 13 is. So, this program is gonna, is gonna run that, so you can check it. So, we're gonna jump over to the compiler and actually have a look at it, and break it down into its parts. So, first thing it's gonna do is ask you for a number, and call that number i. So far, so good. Now, it's going to say for starters that is prime equals true. So now there's a variable called is prime, and its and its starting value is true. So now it's going to run a program called prime check. So let's find. There we go. Sub prime check. So for j two, for j equals two to math square root, if the remainder of i and j equals zero, then prime is false. So what they mean is, if you do the square root on it, if you ask it what number times itself gets you there, if it's got a remainder of zero, then it's not a prime number. So all of that is just fancy maths talk for, like the square root of 16 is four. Beautiful, it's not a prime number. Um, so, so that ends, so if that's the case, then you go to end loop, and end loop is down here, and you're done, and it's still true. Actually, no, it isn't, it's false. So you basically, it starts off being true, and this turns it false. So let's quickly run it. Um, don't worry if you're not understanding all of this, I'm not necessarily understanding every single line of this. 16 is not a prime number, no surprises there. Okay, let's run something that I think is a prime number, 17. 17 is a prime number. Okay, so what they've then done is they've moved on to a program that is like this, but they've created a loop so that it will run over and over again without you having to put a number in. For or for i will equal three, then it will equal four, then it will equal five, all the way up to 100. Starts off being true, it runs the number. If it's true that it is a prime number, it will write out that number and if it's not true, then it won't do anything. And we've got our subroutines here about sub prime check, which is basically that program there. So that's our our thing. And but again, if the remainder is zero, then if false, it is not a prime number. So I run this, and what I think it's going to do is give me all the prime numbers between three and a hundred. There we go. 5, 7, 11, 13, all the way up to 97. And there's actually not all that many of them. But where I think this gets interesting, because you could probably work out most of the prime numbers up to 100, but let's say between 1,000 and 2,000. Let's see how many prime numbers there are between 1,000 and 2,000. And we run the program again. There you go. Actually, oh, actually, a few. Hmm, okay. So 1999 is a prime number, 1997, 1993, 1987. Okay, so I might narrow the field a bit. So let's run it from, you know, let's work with the years that I've been alive. Let's, let's sort of go for how many of those years have been prime number years. And it's 2015, so I'm just going to run the loop for the numbers um, 1970 to 2015. There you go. So those are the years that I've been alive that have been prime numbers those years. Pretty meaningless thing to know, but still it's interesting what you can get get the computer to do. So have a go at running this, see if you can make a small change to it, I mean see if you can make a big change to it. We are kind of at the difficult end of things and I very much look forward to seeing what interesting things you can do.